This week on True Crime Travelers. Sometimes I worry about having a daughter. Like, if I ever have children one day and I'm blessed with a girl, I hope we're best friends. But what if, what if my daughter ends up being a monster? What if my daughter becomes my demise? Welcome to True Crime Travelers, where we investigate suspicious murders and disappearances around the world, but from a traveler's perspective. We are Alexa and Amelia, award-winning travel experts and the authors behind the Solo Girls Travel Guide book series. We are obsessed with safety and true crime, but I promise we're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. I am very excited for today's episode, and so is Emmy, because today's episode takes place on an island that is like me and Emmy's second home. And actually, like quite literally, was our second home. We lived there together for a year during COVID. I lived there for two and a half, three years, and we write the number one guidebook for Bali, the Solo Girls Travel Guide Bali. Get it on Amazon before you go. We own this beautiful community called Girls in Bali. We have so many local friends, so many expat friends. Bali is a place where we really healed and it's beautiful and it's full of beach clubs and amazing restaurants actually and surfing, but it's also one of the best preserved cultures in the world. And before I ask Emmy to give us a history lesson on Bali, because she knows everything, Emmy, can you tell the people how we met? We met because on 2020, early 2020, I went to Bali by myself and I bought a book. I bought the Solo Girls Travel Guide to Bali. And that was my Bali Bible for two months. And then just when I was supposed to leave the island, COVID happened and I got stuck (laughs) in Bali. And thankfully, I had my Bali Bible with me. And that's how Lexi and I met. We got in touch. and Because I'm the writer of the Bali Bible. Yeah, you're the writer of the Bali Bible. And And... Yeah, then we became roommates, and like they say, the rest is history. Yeah, but wait, slow down. I can't believe you became roommates with me because on our very first date, I took you to have, like, the worst tacos on the island. I took the Mexican girl to the most mediocre taco place in Bali. Oh, my God, you did. On our first date. I'm so sorry I did that to you. I forgive you. But then immediately after, I took you to Tacos Aki. I was like, these tacos suck. Let me take you to Tacos Aki. Best tacos in Bali is at a place called Tacos Aki. Mexicola? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Tacos aquí, tacos aquí, the food is amazing, but it's more like American style tacos. Okay, fine. Motel- if you want real Mexican, Motel Mexicola. I agree. But I agree. Okay, I agree. Motel Mexicola or Tacos aquí. So, anyways, though, mm-hmm. we're just going to get into it because this case Let's go. this case is insane. This case is insane. Let me tell you about one of the most infamous deaths of a traveler to ever happen on the island of Bali. First, let me tell you a little background on Bali. So Bali is an island in Indonesia, and it is very different than the rest of the islands. Indonesia, fun fact, is the most populous Muslim country in the world. However, Bali is a Hindu island. We won't get too much in the history lesson, but the Dutch colonized Bali. I mean, do you know this better than I do? Long story short, Bali became Hindu because I don't remember when, like uh, hundreds of years ago, the prince of the island of Java, which is the island next to Bali, he was Hindu. It was like a Hindu kingdom. And they had to flee because there was, you know, like an invasion. So the prince and his court fled to Bali. And it turned out that his court was full of artists and painters and musicians and philosophers. So that's why Bali became this very like philosophical, Mm. spiritual, religious, artistic island. Because one of the people that immigrated the island and really transformed it into what it was. So Bali is a very, very, very unique mix between like the early population of the island. You know, like we're talking about like primitive and yeah, indigenous. And then we have this Hindu mix. So the result is culture that you won't see anywhere else in the world. No. It's such an interesting island. I say that Bali has one of the most best preserved cultures in the world. Now, if you go to Bali and you only go to like Changu or Semenyak, which are, you know, like surfers and cafes and sushi, you might not understand 
how deeply cultural this island is. But if you go up to the north of Ubud, or you, if you have some local friends like we do, you begin to realize how deeply ingrained spirituality, traditions, ceremonies, families are to the Balinese people. So when you go to Bali, honestly, guys, get our Bali travel guidebook. People that go to Bali without it, they say Bali's too touristy. People that go to Bali with it, they're able to unlock what Emmy and I are telling you about here. Yeah, absolutely. You can go to Bali and not really see Bali. Yeah. And if you go to Bali and like you see the real Bali, you get to see that even though the island is changing a lot very fast, real Bali and like this spiritual life is very much still alive. Very much. And that's going to segue this nicely because our main character today, Heather Mack, grew up in a very wealthy family. Her father was a successful jazz composer. His name is James Mack. Her mother, Sheila, a wealthy socialite. And Heather was the apple of their eye. She was the only child and she was spoiled to death. And Heather was actually a daddy's girl. Her and her father were attached at the hip. And in a dreamy way, you know, she was given everything, like the best schools, the best, you know, friends, the best experiences, the best trips. And then one day, Heather's father was diagnosed with colon cancer. He was getting sicker and sicker. And so Sheila, his wife and Heather's mother, she said, you know what? Let's take a trip to Greece. You know, like, let's live these last days beautifully. So the three of them, when Heather was young, they went to Greece. And unfortunately, while they were in Greece, James Mack died. But oh, guess what Sheila did? She carried on with her vacation, leaving her deceased husband's body on the island so she could go and hop to the next island. What? Yeah. So this just foreshadows the relationship that grew between Heather and Sheila. From that moment on, Little Heather was changed. She missed her dad and she had a disdain for her mother. Over the years, Sheila and Heather became nemeses. As Heather grew into her teens, she became defiant, acting out, skipping school, stealing money from her mother. Heather became physically abusive towards Sheila. And over a 10 year period, Emmy, the police were called to their home over 80 times. 80. Eight zero. That's a lot. Yes. Heather would bite her mother, hit her. And once she pushed her mother in the bathroom and Sheila broke her arm, Heather pushed her and she broke her arm. But still, every time the police would come out, Sheila wouldn't press charges. And by having such thin boundaries, some say that Sheila unintentionally created a monster in Heather. Heather was evaluated by mental health professionals many times, and they would also say, like, this girl needs to be hospitalized. This girl needs help because she had a really crazy history of violence. At one moment, she could be so sweet and then vicious the next. You never knew what was going to cause Heather to snap. Here is a quick history. I'm just going to give you a quick history of the police reports of this house, okay, Uh, of this house with Heather and Sheila. In 2010, Heather is 15. One of the statements that she's made to her mother is, I'm going to hurt you. And her mom eventually ended up calling the police. 2011, unstable and violent Heather pushes her mom, who falls and breaks her arm. And then once Heather turns 16 in 2011 as well, she's arrested for biting her mother's arm. And she tells the cops, fine, I'll stop leaving marks on her that you can see. And I'll just start hitting her in the head. Talking about, like, abusing her mom. In 2012, Heather is reported missing. So now Heather's, like, 16, 17. You know, she's, like, in that age. She's reported missing. She comes home, releases chaos, and repeats. She just keeps disappearing. She starts stealing. She's 17 now. She goes missing again, missing again. She's the suspect of theft of two credit cards of her mother. Then she goes missing again, missing again. Suspect in a jewelry theft, more physical altercations. So, like, she just has this cycle of coming home, abusing her mother, leaving, disappearing, stealing things. In 2013, Sheila calls the police in fear that her daughter may kill her. 
2014, more stealing, more disappearing. Okay, so like, you get it. Sheila, (laughs) yeah, over these years, Sheila became scared of Heather. And a lot of her fear, Sheila's fear, would be documented in emails that she would send to her friends. And in one email in particular that was written to her friend Elliot, Sheila's friend Elliot Jacobson on May 2nd, 2014. The subject line was, Heather gone again. The email read, Heather was violent tonight and left. Very scary for me. I'm always worried about her. She documents that they took Heather to a a psych facility. And the doctor said she is so disturbed and very, very sick. And the intake team told Sheila they wanted to keep her there. But Sheila was like, no, she wouldn't comply, you know. So she brings her home. So over the next, you know, few years, these cops are called 80 times. And it leaves me asking. Why call the cops so many times if you don't follow through? Why pick up the phone? It's insane. Like, this cycle is, it sounds insane. Like, Mm -hmm. it just sounds like a very, very, very codependent dynamic relationship. And it's like the typical, like, oh, like, threatening with action, but never really following through. Yes. Yes. So... It's just, yeah, it's like this never-ending cycle. You're- and now my biggest question in my brain is, how is this story going towards they took a mother-daughter trip? <laughs> That's a really good question. How? That's a really good question because you've nailed the word cycle. Abuse is a cycle. And I'm mm-hmm. going to be a little bit raw in this episode, honestly. Emmy knows these things about me. My listeners don't. But I will tell you, as a daughter of a toxic mother... It's not always bad times. In between, the terrible times are good times. And that is why they call it an abuse cycle. I've been there. Usually the person who is abused, like the abused one in a cycle, yeah, like they're hoping or holding on to the good times, thinking like, oh no, this time they mean it. This time they're going to change. This time things are going to be different. And it takes, it's actually a real statistic it takes up to seven attempts to someone who is being abused to actually leave their abusive partner, parent, whatever, or to actually do something. Mm. It takes over seven attempts to actually follow through with action. Mm. And it's even harder when it's a mother, daughter, or a familial relationship. Absolutely. And it sounds like the one on the abused side is Sheila. So she's the one hoping that Heather's mm-hmm. going to get better. Heather's going to get better. She didn't get better, obviously. And, you know, I I don't want to speak ill of Sheila, but I, you know, Sheila, she didn't want this. But I digress. I'm going to go back now and talk about the other side of trauma. And this is something that, you know, hi, speaking on behalf of it. Many girls with no dads. So also, I don't have a dad. Many girls with no dads find so much safety and codependence in their boyfriends or relationships. So when Heather met Tommy Schaefer, an unemployed wannabe rapper that was three years older than her, (laughs) Heather attached and she attached hard. So that makes sense. This makes sense. So we're going to learn about Tommy in just a second, but I wanted to bring up a line. There's a line in Eminem's song, Love the Way You Lie. And it's about an abusive relationship. And it Mm -hmm. says, when a tornado meets a volcano. And that is what happened here when Heather met Tommy. According to those close with him, Tommy was a liar. He would lie to people, particularly girls whom he was romantically interested in, in order to gain and keep attention. For example... He told a girl that he was suffering from a heart condition and he was going to die soon. So like, you know, he's a manipulator, manipulation 101. Okay. So it's very easy for us to imagine this. We have Heather who is volatile, unstable, hates her mom. She meets this liar guy that's like, I'm going to take care of you, baby. Your mom sucks. Like now this creepy wannabe rapper guy is validating all of the anger and hate Heather has towards her mom. It sounds like the perfect storm. It is. It's a tornado meets a volcano. And there is like a little extra plot twist in this. Sheila has a lot of money. And what do you think a wannabe rapper wants? Money. Money. So just keep that in mind when I tell you guys about the fateful trip to Bali that happened in 2015. 
So Sheila plans this mother-daughter trip for them. And I have to be honest, I read varying accounts of how this trip came to be. One is that Sheila said that this was a last ditch effort to save her relationship with her daughter. Two, some say that Sheila knew Heather was pregnant and wanted to get her away from Tommy. And C, some people say that Sheila took Heather to Bali to get an abortion, which is total bullshit. And I mean, I'll let you take that one. It's total bullshit. Like, that's so illegal. Like, I can't think of anything more illegal in Indonesia. Right. You can't. It's a Muslim country. Come on. Right. You're not going to Bali for I, an abortion. I'm going to go with option two, like trying to get her away mm-hmm. and the boyfriend. I actually am going to go with option A and B. I think Sheila wanted Heather to get away from Tommy and she wanted to save the relationship. Just the two of maybe, them. Maybe, maybe, maybe she wanted to take. Heather to like some kind of healer, kind of like exercise for the Balinese way, you know? Like, oh, I wish. Maybe like psychiatrists are not working out. Maybe spiritual healers will do eat, pray, love style. She needed to go see our secret healers. Mm -hmm. She needed to go see our healers. Emmy and I have like our own healers. Buy the Bali guidebook on Amazon and you'll see the healers we're talking about. So, yeah, an exorcism would have been a great idea. But unfortunately, That's not what happened because what Sheila thought would be a beautiful trip turned into hell on earth. Want to travel with us? Every summer, Amelia and I take small groups of women away from the daily stressors of life in what we call river therapy. Imagine whitewater rafting in the most stunning locations across the USA, completely off the grid for up to five days, designed specifically for women who need a soul reset. Bring your stresses, anxieties, and fears, bring your dreams, wishes, and goals, and join us for River Therapy. Go to alexa-west.com and click on Glow Up Travel to join our next trip. Imagine having a mother that would fly you business class to the tropical island of Bali for a mother-daughter vacation and the fancy St. Regis Resort in Nusa Dua, which the rooms that they chose, by the way, were $1,000 a night. And oh my god, the St. Regis Resort is beautiful. They have my favorite kind of hotel room, which is a pool access room. Like the kind of room where you can go from your balcony into the pool. I actually like prefer pool access rooms be over like the private pool rooms, you know, Mm -hmm. like I don't want to be isolated with my boyfriend in a private pool. I want to like, you know, I want to swim up bar. I want to be able to like check out people and gossip and all that kind of stuff. You want witnesses in case you get murdered. Oh my God. I want witnesses in case I get murdered. Yeah. Well, so I don't know exactly which room they stayed in. I just had to talk about the St. Regis pool access room. Anyways. So This hotel is in this New Sadu area. Again, like very beautiful area. Emmy and I don't write about it because it's such a family oriented place, but beautiful anyways. And there are photos of Heather and Sheila on vacation and they seem happy. There are photos where Sheila and Heather, they're wearing matching outfits and they both have like glowy sun-kissed skin. They're smiling. Sheila with her voluminous shoulder-length blonde hair and Heather with her dark tresses. They both look totally different, but you can still see the resemblance that they're mother and daughter. And they seem at ease in these photos. It seems like there's no indication that anything was going wrong. Sheila must have thought, I'm doing it. You know, I'm going to get my daughter back. She just needed a change of scenery. But what Sheila didn't know was that there was a plan brewing behind the scenes. A plan that would turn the vacation for two into a vacation for three. As Sheila's toes were in the sand, watching the sunrise on the east coast of Bali, she had no idea that Tommy Schaefer, the boyfriend she didn't approve of, (laughs) was using her credit card to buy a $12,000 business class flight from Chicago to Bali to crash Sheila and Heather's mother-daughter trip. Oh, God. I know. 
Motherfucker. I know. So Tommy Schaefer, let me tell you like a background of him. He comes from a single parent household and he apparently didn't have many friends growing up because like I said before, he was an exaggerator. Like one of those people that tells really useless lies for no reason. Some pretty Mm -hmm. big lies, some really small lies. And he did this so much that as people grew up around him, they distanced themselves from him. They were like, this guy's a clown, right? And he clearly isn't in the game of honesty. So when he used this credit card, Sheila's credit card, to buy this $12,000 trip, do you think that he just was like, hey, you know, what's she going to do about it? And I'm just going to lie that, like, I didn't mean to or something like that? I think he would just be like, oh, Heather told me to. I'm just going to, like, leave Heather with the problem. Right. He was going to leave Heather with the problem. But actually, they had a plan. Tommy knew that he was never going to have to pay back that $12,000 because he wasn't coming to Bali to join their vacation. He was coming to Bali to stop it. So imagine the shock when Tommy shows up in Bali. Sheila is furious. She is not happy with Heather. And according to Heather... Sheila began drinking and taking pills and they were fighting. So the abuse had followed them to Bali. And I always say, no matter where you go, there you are. Actually, I don't say that. I stole that that quote from someone else, but I say it all the time. No matter where you go, there you are. Sometimes a trip will refresh you, but if you're, you know, not actually actively trying to get out of your old patterns, there you are. So for Sheila, this trip is not going the way she wanted to. So I'm just going to speed this story up, all right? So they have this vacation. Heather spends most of her time with Tommy. Sheila's not happy about it, okay? Then it's checkout day. It's time to check out of the hotel. And uh, Tommy and Heather, they check out first. So they have their big checked baggage. And Tommy's mm-hmm. being really sweet. He's helping Heather like check out of the hotel with her big bag. And the videos on the cameras of the St. Regis show that they were struggling to get this heavy bag down the stairs. They were dragging it through the lobby. And eventually, I think they put it on like a trolley cart. And they need to get this big luggage that maybe it's just filled with a bunch of souvenirs now into the taxi because they're checking out. And Emmy, you know that in a Balinese resort, you can't walk like 10 feet without every single Balinese staff saying hi and smiling and acknowledging you. (laughs) Absolutely. And (laughs) I would have a hard time believing like they are carrying their bags. Like I know you, as soon as you put one foot at a Balinese hotel, no matter the size, even if it's a local guest house, the Balinese are the most welcoming people ever. So hospitable. Like immediately it's like, salamat pagi, like welcome, welcome. Like Mm -hmm. they they help you out with everything. What do you need? What can we do for you? Yeah. So, I mean, if they're carrying like their own bag, hmm, I cannot wait to hear what the bag has to do with the story. You're too smart for me, Emmy. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) Heather and Tommy, they go to the concierge and they say, hi, we're checking out and we need a taxi. And, you know, the taxi's there and they go, they load the luggage into the back of the taxi and they say oh like let us go get my mom because she's got to pay for this okay so tommy and heather they go off to get sheila's credit card again so they can check out so the taxi driver he's in front of the saint regis and he has their luggage in the back so he waits for them and he waits for them and he waits for them these two kids they just don't come back and he's like god i got places to be i gotta go so he's like let me get this luggage out of the back of my car The taxi driver opens his door, makes his way to the trunk, pops the trunk, goes to grab the bag, and then he sees that this luggage is covered in blood. No. So he immediately takes the luggage to the local police station where they open the suitcase and find the horrific discovery inside. Hey guys, it's Alexa, the founder of the Solo Girls Travel Guide. It's the number one guidebook series for women. And did you know that I also happen to write the best-selling guidebook for Bali on Amazon? Yeah. And I've got to tell you something about Bali. 
When people travel there without my Bali guidebook, they come back saying, Bali's too touristy. To which I reply, no, you just traveled like a tourist. But when you explore Bali with my guidebook, it is a whole different story. You'll meet my local friends, visit secret healers, and discover parts of the island that feel like Bali 20 years ago. And most of my readers come back having some kind of spiritual awakening. So if you're thinking of visiting Bali or Asia in general, make sure you check out the Solar Girls Travel Guide collection first. I lived in Asia for 10 years, you guys, and I have poured my expertise into these books. With the Solar Girls Travel Guide, you'll get money-saving tips and time-stretching advice, like how to get from the airport to your hotel without paying triple the local price. You'll get actual local secrets and advice, including the contacts of my personal drivers and access to my secret healer. You'll get waterfalls, beaches, and jungle hikes that aren't on any of the other blogs. And of course, you're going to get Indonesian history, culture, and fun facts to really understand the island. Go into your vacation knowing that you're getting the best, the safest, and the totally worth it spots. Let your hair down and tell your mom not to worry because I've got you covered. And if you're curious about coming to Bali, join my Facebook community called Girls in Bali. It is the most supportive girl group on the internet. No one is mean here. Ask whatever you want. Make friends. Get recommendations. No judgment. Just don't ask the girls to help you plan your itinerary. That is what the guidebook is for. Oh, and don't forget that Amelia and I literally plan our readers' trips to Bali and beyond. Jump on a call with one of us and let us take the stress of planning away. Go to alexa-west.com and click on Plan My Trip. The Balinese police lay the heavy suitcase down, unclip the latches, carefully lift the top, and are immediately hit with the stench of a dead, bloody body. A body that falls out of the suitcase. Well, half of it. There was Sheila, Heather's mother, cut up, wrapped in a bedsheet. Half of it. Half of it. I mean, you know, they had to fit her in the suitcase. So I actually think her entire body was in the suitcase, but I, the way that they positioned her. So she was wrapped in a bedsheet. But where were Tommy and Heather? Now, Emmy, put on your these people are dumb face because I'm about to tell you these people are dumb. <laughs> this is what happened. This is what happened. Uh, Heather and Tommy, after they put that suitcase in the back seat of the trunk, they ran. They ran. They, they went out the back of the St. Regis and they went and they checked into another hotel. And the staff were suspicious that they checked in with no luggage. And so, you know, once people were like, hey, you know, we've got fugitives on the loose on the tiny island of Bali, the hotel staff put it together very quickly. I mean, if you killed someone in Bali or anywhere, really, I mean, the first thing that I would do is I would have my passport in my hand. I would go straight to the airport and I would get on a plane before anyone could figure out what was happening. Right? Absolutely. Uh, especially if you're in a tiny, 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 tiny island and in a very tiny, tiny, tiny area mm. where it's just like resorts and nothing else. Like if you're in the middle of nowhere, fine. But you're probably in the area with the most security cameras in the entire island. Absolutely. Honestly, this is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. You cannot run and hide in Bali. Let me tell you, if you commit a crime in Bali, you cannot hide. If you have a social media scandal in Bali, you cannot hide. If you are a stalker, if you cheat on your boyfriend in Bali and people want to find you and shame you, you cannot hide, okay? You cannot come to Bali and do anything shady because Bali will catch you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It will. It will. So do we know which hotel did they check? into i don't know it wasn't a fancy one it was just like some the random random one but when police captured them i'm also gonna let you have this emmy i'm just gonna leave you with this when police captured them they said that an armed gang had come and captured tommy and heather and they killed sheila and they were held like at gunpoint emmy i i, I one moment <laughs> One moment. Like, this is like the stupidest, like, yeah, like, please, like, please, like, 
Can we have one of those like ding, col- like ding, ding, colored ding. screens like yeah, yeah. Ding, ding, like the Joe Party music sounding? That is, yeah, the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. The only gang in Bali is the taxi mafia, and honestly, like the only gang in Bali actually protects the Balinese. I mean, they have like their taxi mafia, their taxi mafia going on. They suck, but but they they would never ever do something like this no the only gang is like the taxi mafia so no one believes this story right they are detained by the police and that is when the news officially emerges that heather is pregnant and she knew she was pregnant which means that she was pregnant when sheila was killed all of this is really messed up but the real question is what happened in the room that day what happened in the room and why? Now, let's get to the CCTV footage. So this case is not a case of who done it. You know, eventually, I mean, we know who, who did it, right? And there is a lot of evidence to support who did it. Starting with the surveillance video of Tommy in the St. Regis. And he's walking towards Sheila's room. And you can see something really bulbous under his sweatshirt he bulbous. bulbous i don't know how else to say it <laughs> he's carrying a metal fruit bowl with like a handle on it so the cameras show tommy entering the hotel room sheila's room and then an hour later leaving with the suitcase so we obviously know it was heather and tommy that killed their mother apparently this is what happened apparently they had planned this since before Bali. Since before Bali, Heather was like, we're going to kill my mom. And Tommy was like, hell yeah, we're going to kill your mom. So they came up with a code word for murder. And that's called, it was quote unquote, saying hi. So they're going to say like in their text messages, it's time to say hi to my mom, which means like, you know, it's time to murder my mother, whatever. So hours before the murder, Heather texted Tommy that she literally could not wait for this murder. In the text, the two planned it all out. Heather was going to hit her mom over the head. She was going to drug her mom and hit her mom over the head, but she chickens out. So then Tommy comes to do it and they do it together. So they texted all of this? Yeah, to each other. They, they were texting each other the whole time. How? How? Because like, they're I, stupid. Honestly, my I cannot wrap my brain around how, how stupid are these two idiots? Well, okay. Again, you are just so good at segueing me into the next section because... Since we don't have to play detective today in who did it, instead of playing detective, we're going to play what the fuck were they thinking? So listen, Emmy, I've got to say something here. You and I are researching a few cases where someone murders, like an American murders someone premeditatively in another country. And that is stupid. I mean, it depends on the country, really. Some countries have nightmare prisons like Bali, and some prisons are the Four Seasons, like Norway. So if you want to kill your mom or your husband, measure the prison risk first. Just a little friendly reminder from true crime travelers. Or at least read the room. Did you just murder your mother in Bali? Then you should grab your passport and get your ass to the airport before you end up in Hotel K. And Hotel K is the nickname for the nightmarish prison in Bali, Hotel Kurobakan, which is wildly overcrowded and it is overrun with disease and drugs and rats and the food is moldy. Like it is one of the worst prisons you would ever want to be in. Emmy, side note, when we lived in Bali, our house was in Kurobakan and Mm -hmm. we would drive by Hotel K on the way to the grocery store to buy fish to make ceviche. Do you remember driving past yeah. the prison? I do. And I was always like, mm-hmm. you know, like you like drive all like straight up, just like looking around and being like, whoa. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, there are books and movies about this prison mm-hmm. is there are a lot of horror stories about Hotel K, as they call it. Yeah. And what people need to understand is that in Indonesia, they still have death by firing squad. So. These idiots decided to kill their mother in Bali. And this was like very premeditated because there are texts from Tommy and his cousin before Bali. And he said, Tommy says to his cousin, that bitch Heather's crazy, huh? 
She asked me to do something really insane. She asked me to find someone to kill her mom for $50,000. So these texts and these conversations would keep happening. Someone also said Heather asked them directly to kill her mom. So they've been floating around these ideas. Tommy had time to think about how to kill Sheila. Should we smother her with a pillow? Drown her in the ocean? Make it look like some kind of accident? That didn't happen though. As we know now, Sheila died in cold blood. In Bali, her body brutalized. Dude, they overcomplicated themselves. There are so many ways that you could die in Bali. Like motorcycle accidents, surfing can be brutal. It's full of insects and snakes and... Yeah. I mean, even crossing the street can be a <laughs> whole adventure, you know? Yeah. They could have made this look like an accident, right? But instead, they killed her in the St. Regis, put her body in a suitcase, and then abandoned the suitcase in the back of a taxi. So this... And texted about it. And texted about it. Do you know what I would love? I would love to have a beer with the whoever worked this case. Like, please, detectives, whoever worked this case, I would love to have a beer with them. Because they must have had, like fun with this it was just like when it's so absurd yeah it's so absurd it's so absurd it's so absurd that it makes me wonder if it really was premeditated because honestly i'm having a hard time really believing that they actually thought this through mm -hmm. okay on that note then i guess we can play detective surprise let's play detective okay so now we're on how premeditated was it <laughs> right like clearly they talked about it right but you know how like young kids sometimes like fantasize about things and this guy's a big bullshitter maybe they both weren't quite sure but as one took a step forward the other took a step forward you know because if it was really premeditated they would have really thought this through this seems like half meditated half meditated for sure like i mean you're saying there's like records of heather asking people and everything but There's also this whole context of her being like really dramatic and like disappearing and coming back and blowing things out of proportion. And I mean, it is pretty obvious that she had all these anger towards her mother. Maybe it was because of her dad and like her dad dying in Greece and Sheila not stopping to mourn. I mean, who knows? There's probably a whole, there's a whole lot that we probably don't know about the mother daughter relationship, but still. It doesn't necessarily mean that she actually wanted to go forward and actually kill her mom. Except that's what the texts say, you know? So what did they think was going to happen after Sheila was dead? I think maybe that is where we need to think. One account was that, remember, Sheila is very rich. Apparently, there was talk that Heather was going to inherit $11 million dollars if Sheila was dead. Oh, my God. Such a letdown when they found out that that money wasn't going to be coming through, either because Sheila didn't have it or because you can't get the money of someone you murdered. It just doesn't work that way. So absolutely not. I just think this shows how young and naive and stupid and angry these kids were. These kids. So I think young and naive are the like the key word there. Yep. And it is when you are. I don't know, a damaged girl, a damaged child, that your hero in Knight in Shining Armor shows up and says, I'm going to save you from this horrible woman, and I'm going to paint this fantasy for you, and we're going to have a baby, and we're going to ride off into the sunset, and she's never going to bother us again. But, of course, that's not how murder works, is it? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, now, it was pretty easy for the police to prosecute Tommy and Heather, They had so many key witnesses. They had hotel staff, taxi drivers, forensic experts, and all of these people slowly pieced together the events leading up to Sheila Mack's murder. Talking about forensic experts, I have like a gruesome question. Mm. You said like the body fell down, like it was like half and half or something mm. like that. How would someone cut someone in half with something you have in a hotel? Like, You don't even have scissors in a hotel room. Like, did they go to, like, the gardeners and steal a machete or, you know, like, one of those machetes they used to, like, cut down the coconuts from the palm trees? Or they just, like, called the concierge, hey, excuse me, could I have a butcher knife, please? Like, how? 
You're right. But it's the St. Regis, right? So like people order fancy room service. So I'm sure there's a steak knife in that room. So here is what apparently happened that day. Apparently the plan was again for Heather to kill her mom and then she chickened out. So Tommy came in and he hit Sheila over the head and Sheila's cause of death was actually asphyxiation from choking on the blood, from choking on her own blood. Oh, right. So at one point, Tommy said, we can just make it look like she was drunk and slipped and fell. What happened to that plan? That plan would have been much better. Then you would have a grieving daughter being like, my poor mom, you know, she slipped and fell. She just takes too many, you know, prescription pills. Right. But these two idiots, Mm -hmm. they killed her and then they stuck. Yeah, we all know how it went. So now Heather and Tommy are both in Hotel K, which, by the way, Hotel K allows men and women to interact. This place is horrible, like I've told you. But um, Heather then had baby, her baby in jail. So she was pregnant. Heather had her baby in jail. Baby Stella. And something that is kind of a positive for the mother is that baby Stella was able to stay in prison with Heather for the first two years of her life. So I understand that. That's a good bonding between baby and mom. But Mm -hmm. Hotel K is not even fit for a dog. So to have a be raising a baby is terrible. And at two years old, Stella was given to a kind of a foster family to be raised in Bali. And fun fact, the foster family that raised Stella is a friend of mine. Oh, yes. She's a friend of mine. She's been on the island for a very long time. She has kids of her own. She's an incredible human being. And she was able to raise Stella on the island of Bali for quite a while. While Heather was in jail, she made a video, a confession video. She dropped the lies of there was a gang. She dropped the lies of everything. And this is what Heather says in her confession video. She says, I'm Heather Mack, and I want to be set free. I don't want to live in a lie anymore. When I was 10 years old, my mother killed my father in a hotel in Athens. Two weeks before Bali, I discovered this, and I decided to kill my mother. In a hotel room. Yeah. So people are like, oh, wow, that explains it. But a lot of people also don't believe her. There is no proof that Sheila killed her father. And also it seems like six months before the Bali trip, Heather was planning Sheila's murder. So this quote unquote confession is bullshit. I mean, at least she's fessing up to it, but it's it's bullshit. Also, if she had like such resolution from like two weeks before to kill Sheila in Bali, she would probably would have done it better. Yeah, she would have done At least try to get away with it. Mm -hmm. At least try. But she didn't try. And instead, Heather spent this time in Hotel K in Bali. And she learned Indonesian. And she learned how to dance. And she got to hang out with Tommy. And honestly, she made quotes of like, this is the best prison ever. So you know what? She's living her best life. So I'm so sad for her. When she was eventually extradited back to the U.S., to finish her prison sentence in the U.S. And she is going to be serving 26 years in the prison in the U.S., which honestly probably might be a little tougher in terms... I don't know. It might be great. It might. I have no idea what she wants. And what happened to Tommy? Good question. I actually haven't looked this up, so I'm going to read this to you right now. Tommy Schaefer could return to the U.S. by 2026. So he is still in... Bali serving his 18 year prison sentence for the murder of Sheila. And he could be released from Indonesian custody and return to the States as early as spring 2026, where, of course, he's going to have to carry out his sentence. I would think like 18 years is not a lot for killing someone. He got less than his co conspirator. He got less than Heather. Heather got 26 years. Isn't that interesting? And baby Stella, my friend in Bali, you know, because she raised baby Stella. And that was like the family. That's like the only family. That's the only normal family that baby Stella understood. So my friend tried very hard to keep custody of Stella, but it was ultimately ruled that Stella would also live in the States with her grandmother, another grandmother, I do believe. Tommy's mother is who I believe she's with. 
So it's hard. It's hard to cover these cases that are so close to us in one way or another. And I mean, you know, the traveler community is so tight. We've lived around the world for so long. We have connections to many cases. So on True Crime Travelers, we're not just talking about like something random that happened in a town that we don't know. We're usually talking about cases where it's close to us on some level, you know? And I, mm-hmm. I think it's really important for you and me to stay in these cases with curiosity, but also trying to understand why people have done what they've done. And I keep thinking about Heather again, you know, like I was not a very loved child and I think, could it have been different for Heather if Heather's father didn't die? Would she have been happier if Sheila remarried? You know, it's like the butterfly effect. You never know. We don't know if Sheila could have done something different. All we know is what happened. Yeah. And that the motive is clear that Heather and Tommy wanted to live a life without Sheila and they probably wanted her money and they probably just wanted her gone. It was a really unfortunate series of events that led to the end of Sheila's life. Sheila, this beautiful woman with tons of friends, with a beautiful lifestyle, and with a daughter who she wanted to love, who she wanted to nurture, who she wanted to save. And she couldn't. So on this episode of True Crime Travelers, we don't need anyone to help us solve mystery. Rather, we want to give you a very important travel lesson. I mean, what would the travel lesson be for this episode? Um, If you're going to kill someone, do your research. At least research the prison systems. Like, choose a country that doesn't have, like, rats and cockroaches and that kind of stuff. You do not want to be... Go to Norway. Go to Norway. I once saw a meme online that was, like, talking about the Norway prisons. And someone was like, took a screenshot and was like, this is my retirement plan. (laughs) Like, the prisons in some countries are so nice that people are like, I would love to retire in that prison. That is what you want to do. That's what you want to do. So, thank you, True Crime Travelers, for joining us on this episode in an island that we love oh so much and is honestly an island that will change your life it's beautiful check out our website we're going to leave all of our resources to our bali stuff and if you're going to bali make sure you plan a trip using our travel guide because we know what we're talking about and we will introduce you to our local friends and good people and great places and you will love the island and we'll make sure that you don't just go to the tourist spots that's all for bali y'all come back next week as we take you to the country that i consider to be the most female-friendly destination in Asia. No spoilers this week. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.